here live this uh, this morning, or I suppose this day, this evening, for those of you that are farther away. Just a couple of quick housekeeping notes to cover. You should be able to hear me at this point. Um, and of course, if you can't, uh, hopefully you will read this bullet here and notice that. As a participant, you are muted, so you will not be able to ask questions through the audio interface. We do have quite a lot of people on the call. Uh, if you have questions, I would encourage you to use either the Questions tab or the Chat tab, preferably the Questions tab if you have a question for me or for one of the organizers that you want us to field during the event. From there, um, you should be aware that this webcast is being recorded. However, um, the participant information, so your name and information, does not appear in the recording, only what I'm showing on the slides here. We will have a question and answer period at the end of the event, and that will not be recorded. At that point, we will start taking specific questions and answering those uh, over the audio. If you have questions, I would definitely encourage you to go ahead and put those in the questions tab as we are going along, and we will keep an eye on those and try to answer them either as we're going along or at the end. So go ahead and become familiar with the interface if you can and see what you can find there. So a couple of things that you should be aware of when you're listening to this webcast and I'm talking about Flare and the issues around Flare. Um, Scriptorium Publishing is a consultancy. And the vast majority of our project work right now is related to XML. So people come to us and ask us to help them implement XML. We do XML training. We do a lot of data customization work. That informs our interest in Flare. We are really interested in Flare only as it pertains to data publishing. We are not actually particularly interested in it as an XML authoring tool because it does not meet some of the requirements we have. You cannot validate in, against a specific structure in Flare. But I am, in fact, very interested in the DITA features, and that's what I want to focus on in this discussion today. So I wanted to start off and actually ask you to participate here and give me a little bit of information, if you don't mind, about how you are using Flare. So what I want to do here is launch a poll and ask you to go ahead and check whichever option here is the most appropriate for you. Um, are you Flare users? Are you DITA users? Are you using both? Are you looking at them and you know really not sure where this is going to go? And um, I'll give you a, just maybe a minute or so to go ahead and fill this out. Uh, my expectation is that I'm going to see a lot of Flare users who are also interested in DITA, but I, but I really don't know for sure what's out there. All right, so I have 90, oh, over 90% have voted, so I'll give you about another five seconds, and then we'll close the poll and take a look at the results. So the results are, as you can see, uh, a lot of Flare users, a lot of not using either one of those, but perhaps considering the two, and very few DITA-specific users. In other words, very few people that are using DITA but not yet Flare. Um, and that, I think, is, is pretty much what I was expecting from this group. So I'm glad to hear that because it means that I have probably built the uh, correct content in here. So the second thing that I wanted to ask you was about what kinds of output formats you're using. Now, I want to explain here that when I say web help, I'm talking about an HTML-based help interface with a tripane that is not compiled, so not a chum file, not something proprietary and uh, Flare, RoboHelp, and a number of the other tools do deliver web help. And of course, we have print and PDF. We have general HTML, sort of minus the help interface, compiled HTML help. And if you have other things that you would like to specify, you could use the questions tab or the chat tab to type those in there if, if you want to. So un unsurprisingly, many of you are saying print and PDF. I'll give you another, say, 10 seconds or so, and we'll close this one out and take a look at what kind of results we get. All right, so in this poll, we are showing 88% 
print and PDF, which is more or less what I expected, a lot of web help, and then a lot of chum files, more than I might have expected, some generic HTML and some others. Uh, let me see if anybody specced what they're doing. So the, un, among the answers here, I see uh, Flash, Swift files, uh, also Windows help files, Eclipse help. Um, that looks like a typo. And Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Interesting. OK, so thank you for that. I will go ahead and close these results. And we will move on and take a look here. So at this point, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about what Slayer has done and our overall assessment of what is available here. In Flare version 5, what MADCAP has done is basically provided a way to create web-based help or web help output from DITA content. There's some pretty good support for DITA components, things like content references, DITA maps, all the different things that make up a DITA thing. Uh, export is problematic, and I'll show you, and I'll show you why. And related to that, round tripping, so DITA to Flare to DITA, or perhaps Flare to DITA to Flare, is not supported in this version. They did not promise it, and they have also not provided it. So um, that's not necessarily a criticism. They simply said it will not be there in this version. Uh, but the import is actually in, in pretty decent shape. So I wanted to do a demo and take a look at the import and then the export and see where we are with this. Before I go there, I did want to talk a little bit about web help and the HTML-based help problem. Uh, for those of you that are using Flare, you have the ability to produce web help or a web type help. The problem that DITA users face is that there is no HTML-based help from the DITA Open Toolkit, which is the toolkit provided with DITA. As a result, you face some pretty unappealing choices if you're trying to figure out what you're going to do in terms of, of web help you can choose to customize the open toolkit, which is uh, significantly challenging. Uh, now we are talking about a programming environment, something really much more difficult than hand coding HTML or something like that. It is really, really difficult. You can use a help authoring tool such as Flare or RoboHelp and take your data content, generate it through your help authoring tool, and produce the web help that way. Or you could give up on web help and produce something else like generic HTML. Uh, which is not necessarily the best choice, but it is certainly a choice. So one of the reasons from an XML perspective that the Flare support for DITA is potentially compelling is because it gives us a way to deliver web help, to deliver HTML-based help interfaces. So when we import DITA content in, it pretty much works, and we do have the ability to generate web help. Now, what I'd like to do is run through and show you what happens when you bring DITA content, some simple DITA content into Flare, and then take a look at some of the various DITA components and how those are mapped over to Flare. So I'm going to switch over to Flare. And I just have the little Getting Started wizard displayed here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tell it that I would like to create a project from DITA files. This, that text is actually a tiny bit misleading because you actually have to create the project from the DITA map file. Um, near as I can tell, you can't import just a DITA file, sort of a naked DITA 